If you have cats or other unwanted animals trespassing in your backyard, I'm going to show you how to make a motion activated water spray repellent that's not only more adaptable than commercial versions, but can be made for as little as $15 in 45 minutes. Even if you have no previous skills in making stuff. You may be aware I have a bit of an ongoing cat problem, but if you're new here, cats have been frequenting my backyard, causing all sorts of havoc, like on things, scratching stuff, eating my grass and then remembering they don't like grass and then attempting to return it thinking I won't notice. So I made a couple of cat deterrents in the past and we had some good fun testing out the effectiveness of these devices. So after I made my first deterrent video a few years ago, people asked if I could do up some instructions that were a bit more realistic and practical because apparently some people like to retain their central door locking components in their car. But also some people said things like they didn't think they would be smart enough to make a DIY animal repellent, which I don't think should stop anyone. I'm not smart. I still can't work out why doorways in my house don't work sometimes. So this is what's inspired me to work out a nice simple recipe for people to build their own repellent that's not only cheap, but can be made by anyone easily. Now, I know since I made my original video, there are now commercial sprayers available on the market. However, these ones can be really expensive. If you're looking at setting a couple up, which is very likely, you'll be pushing close to the $200 mark. And for that, all you'll generally get is something that only comes with a lawn spike and sprays an area that's too wide. So good luck using that around outdoor furniture and electronic appliances. Now, what I'm gonna do today is give a basic overview of how to make an ultra cheap motion activated sprayer in its most simple form. But also for those wanting to have a crack at building this following some more detailed instructions, I've done it up as an easy to follow illustrated ebook. It's just a few dollars and will help support this channel so I can hopefully make some more frequent videos for you. Link is in the description. The book also has a chapter on making a more advanced repellent, which still works out under $20, but looks way cooler is way more durable and there's also a stack of optional mods so you can use it indoors without water to say stop a cat going into a bedroom or adapt it to have different sprinkler fittings depending on your situation and even adapt it with a doorbell to serve as a cheap wireless driveway buzzer but if you can't be bothered making one i'll be giving away some of my hand-built prototypes too details at the end of the video okay let's build ourselves a cat repellent now the primary ingredient for this contraption is stuff. Well, not this much stuff, more like this much. Thumbs up. More specifically, a 12 volt solenoid like so. You can buy them online pretty cheap or you could salvage one from your washing machine. If you do, don't stress, they grow back. This one is half inch or if your finger gets stuck, you know you've got the right size. Then from your local hardware store, you're gonna need a couple of reticulation risers, an end cap, a coupling, and a reducing coupling like this. Check the inside of all your plastic parts because sometimes they're made pretty crappy. Like this one, which has a big plastic danger growing inside this tube. Grab your backyard garden hose sprayer trigger handle spraying thing. Then all you need from this is the plastic adapter in the bottom, which you should be able to unthread. If you can't, it's because they've glued it in because the manufacturer is a cheap ass and they don't want to put a rubber washer in there. You can buy them separately, but they can cost more than an entire trigger spray. Yeah, the world is stupid. You'll also need a 12 volt power adapter. I salvaged this one from a telephone equipment, apparently. Get yourself a 6 amp rectifier diode at the rectifier diode store. Then at the heart of our spray deterrent is this little gem, which is a 12 volt infrared motion detecting module. You can buy them online for about $3. Bargain. With all of our ingredients, let's kick this build off with some thread sealing tape. Thread tape is the stuff you picked up as a kid thinking it was normal tape, and then you're like, what the f is this shit? Why does dad have this useless tape in the shed that doesn't stick to anything? Or maybe that was just me. Anyway, we need to wrap this around all of the threads to stop any water leaks. I've put some around the reticulation riser, which is on the spraying end of our device. However, you wanna make sure you have a generous amount sealing the parts on the inlet end where the hose connects. Next up, grab your end cap and you're gonna to wanna to drill a small hole in the center of it with a drill, because that's what a drill's for, drilling. A four or five millimeter hole should be sweet as. Give it a little drill in the reverse direction just to smooth out the edges because you want this to be pretty tidy for nice water flow. You can then screw the hose adapter into the coupling and thread these onto the inlet of the solenoid valve. 
There should be an arrow embossed on the solenoid valve showing which way the water flows. On the business end of our solenoid valve, you can also put the other coupling on, then the sprinkler riser and your end cap with the drilled hole in the end. And there you go, easier than Lego. You've made the spraying bit of this cat repellent. Let's move on. We can now wire up the motion sensing part. In my original video, I used an alarm motion sensor which had to be hacked to activate the water spray. But this time around, we'll be using this dedicated infrared motion sensor switch, which makes hooking it up as simple as three wires. Let's do it. On the motion sensor board, grab those three wires and strip them back. Get your 12 volt power adapter. If it has a plug on the end, you can chop that off. This can also be powered from common household batteries, which I go into more detail about in the ebook. Take the positive wire that's coming out of your power adapter, then twist this together with the red wire coming out of your motion sensing board. Then the negative wire coming out of the power adapter gets twisted with the black wire from the board. We've now made two of our three connections. Yes, I'm good at counting. Now grab that diode. You can draw a little face on him if you want to. You know, it's not totally necessary, but I guess I'd call it a strong suggestion and you'll probably regret not doing it. Bend his arms down and tighten him down under the terminals of the solenoid. Grabbing that negative black wire connection we just made, wrap that onto the leg of the diode. This leg. Then that yellow wire gets twisted around the other leg of the diode. Okay, you can now solder all those connections. First I've soldered this one, and then I've soldered that one, and then I've soldered the other one. It's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. With that done, you can then tape them all up. With insulation tape though, not that white shit that doesn't stick to anything. Then grab yourself an angle grinder, and then do this. You know why. Then chuck the little plastic hat onto the solenoid. That way the cats won't know what it is. For the final stage of this build, we have to get the little infrared sensing eyeball, then with a few spots of hot glue in the end of the sprinkler riser, we're going to stick that in there. If you're just using normal craft glue, you'll have to hold this pose for around 12 hours. Then, as dodgy as it is, the quickest way to give the motion sensing eyeball and board some protection from touching on things and going zappy zap is just by wrapping it in some insulation tape. This motion sensing tube of doom then needs to be hot glued onto the side of the solenoid, pointing in the direction of the thing that's going to get wet. And that's it. You've completed the build. Celebrate by giving it a good sniff. That's a smell of success and a cat-free backyard. And probably toxic melted plastic vapors. Oh, hang on, we've sniffed too soon. The motion sensing board needs to go somewhere, so just glue it onto the back of the solenoid. And she'll be right. We are done. Good build team. Time to test it out. Now you can get your standard hose connection and hook it up and fire up the tap. If there's any bad leaks, you might want to add some more thread sealing tape to those sections. After powering this up, it works pretty well. When it sees movement directly in front, the spray then gives it a decent douse with water which will deter whatever animal or human is causing you issues. I'll show you how to mount it up now, but further to what we've done so far, in the ebook there's more details on the specific parts and problems you might encounter while making this basic version of the sprayer. As well as a very straightforward guide to making the fancier version, which is weatherproof and a bit more practical for mounting on a standard tripod thread, so you can use it with all kinds of cheap camera clamps and suction mounts from eBay, which is perfect for any imaginable animal deterring need you might have. Now for mounting the basic build, one of the simplest ways is something like cable ties to a stake. For grass areas or for paved areas, easy options are cable ties to the leg of a chair or a table. As I've done in the past, you can simply gaffer tape it to a brick or an option I haven't actually tried myself. You could just tape it directly to a cat and then let it play with the other cats. Whatever you choose, it definitely does need to be something sturdy though, because you got to remember it recoils as it sprays, so you don't want this thing flying around on the end of a garden hose at 1am. Keep in mind with this sprayer, depending on your deterring requirements, you can experiment with the nozzle hole size, a smaller hole can project further but with less water volume, and reducing the pressure can minimise the effect if you want to simply remind a family pet not to go into a specific part of the garden. 
I'm actually going to give a couple of my fancier build prototypes away. If you're keen on getting your hands on one of these to enter the draw, I guess, uh, make sure you're subscribed and drop a comment below saying anything, really. Actually, maybe why you need one, uh, just so I know who actually wants one and who doesn't. If you're new here and it's been a few years since I've uploaded this video, I've thought ahead and I'll be saving a couple to give away in the future too. Now, as for putting this particular build to use in tackling my own backyard cat invasion, I'll be right back with a new video showing you the results of how it performs, which you don't want to miss, so make sure you're subscribed and click the shit out of the upload notification bell. Hit the like button. I'm Craig Turner, my YouTube channel is Turner81, and I'll see you soon.